welcome once again to vehicle maintenance and repairs.com. Um, I have gotten a pretty interesting vehicle here. Um, it is a uh, Fiat uh, Strada. Um, it's a 1600-16-valve engine. Um, what is so interesting about it is that it's supposed to be a half-ton or three-quarter ton uh, pickup and uh, it's got an unusual canopy on it, as you can see. You know, it makes it look like a sedan vehicle. And, uh, you know, when you open it up, it just sort of opens up that much, you know, so that you can gain access to the back. But anyway, from one thing to the other, uh, this vehicle has, I suspect, uh, it has um, snapped the cam belt. Okay, because uh, when you crank it, you listen very carefully. It is just sort of... Cams on, the cams are not turning. Okay, that sounds very much like it's been quite a few valves. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to be taking off the cylinder, which you can see it's not an easy fit. And apparently uh, you need special tools to line the cams up and all that. But I'll take you through the whole procedure. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead and strip it down. So basically the first thing I'll do is disconnect the battery. I'll take off the coil pack, I'll take out the, uh, the, the, the plug wires, Okay, um, try and get the intake manifolds out of the way, disconnect the exhaust, you know, get the exhaust manifold off. Um, I'll just basically take the front cover off and, uh, you know, and then just lift, lift the cylinder off. And once I have the cylinder off, uh, you know, I'll, I'll take you through it on the bench and see how bad the valves are and so on and so forth. Okay, so without further ado, I'll go ahead and I'll get back to you once I've got the cylinder stripped off. So I've got the, the Fiat Strada 1600 um, cylinder stripped. As you can see, there's no cam shafts on. Okay, but when I turn the head around, you can see that all the valves are bent. All 16, the valves are bent. Okay, and this is the result of um, cam belt uh, breaking. Okay, uh, so uh, once again, you know, I need to just uh, um, um, emphasize the importance of checking and um, replacing the cam belts um, at its recommended intervals. Um, I'm going to show how to assemble this whole job and how to put the head back on and, and, and so forth. It's a pretty difficult job, um, you know, Fiat, they do not design the engines really to, for, for anybody just to easily work on it. We need special tools here as well, so I'll be covering that when it's time to assemble. So that's what the cam valve looks like, all broken. Okay, you can see that it's uh, stripped quite a few of the teeth on the inside. Okay, strip the teeth off and uh, the belt also sort of just disintegrated and it broke. Okay, so that caused all the valves to bend. Okay, so I have stripped this vehicle I had to take the bumper off, I had to take the radiator unit out, I had to take the uh, wheel arches out, okay, I've basically got the wheel arches just uh, laying out of the way. Why I had to do that was I discovered with this engine, you actually cannot put it back uh, without accessing um, this area here, you know, because we have to put the cylinder back first, then you have to put the two cam boxes on and then only you can put the manifold on okay so with the radiator in place this is uh, the condenser for the air conditioner so that can be moved um, as necessary but this area we need this work area here to tie up the intake manifolds okay i'll, I'll take you through the whole um, assembly procedure but just know that you have to strip the whole front of the vehicle down to access you have to have that access there. okay I have sent the cylinder in away I've just received it okay um, you can see that's brand new valves all 16 of them I've replaced the valve guides as well okay I didn't want to take a chance with that so far I've uh, put on the water flange okay which is basically three bolts and the o-ring that seals it up there I've put that back these are the two cam boxes, okay, I've loosened up the center nuts. Uh, you can see I've marked it inlet and exhaust. 
that is what 16 bent valves look like. All 16 were bent. Apparently this cam belt broke at high speed and obviously the most natural reaction once you have um, your car switched off you will try and start it. Uh, not being a knowledge and knowledgeable person you wouldn't think that the cam belt might have snapped and that you're going to be bending the valves as you're cranking. But anyway, be, it, be that as it may, then of course enter the toolkit which we are going to need for this job. I will show you how to use it. You can see, um, you know, these blank offs here, they mark inlet and exhaust. Um, that'll give you an idea that yes, um, that has to come on the back of the, um, the cam, the cams, okay, at the back here, to lock them up, to lock the cam in the proper position for timing the motor. I'll show you how I do all that, okay, but just know, you need special tools. This tool is, uh, I think it's a waste of time, a waste of money, this part of the tool over here. You are supposed to put, um, you're supposed to put a, a dial gauge on it and to, to find top dead center. But I'll show you on the engine, there's so many places that are marking top dead center um, on the car itself that you actually don't need that tool. This tool is to tension, um, you know, to, to tension the tensioner, you know, to adjust the tensioner. Um, it's all new to me as well, so I will learn with you, you know, as we go along. Um, they give an extra bulk here because you have two different sizes, you know. Uh, that looks like a 8mm and that looks like 6mm or 8mm and 10mm. And um, it depends on probably the vehicle that you're working on. So this tool is specific for the 16 valve, 1600 petrol engine. Okay, so I'm going to, the first thing we're going to do is put the cylinder head on and, uh, you know, I'll take you through that. All right, but special tools, two cam boxes, 16 bent valves, 16 brand new valves, and a cylinder that is ready to be assembled. So the first thing, you know, we just, I just sort of cleaned up everything nicely. Okay, I've um, turned the engine to top dead center. Before we actually go any further, let me show you um, how I found top dead center. This is the gearbox. The gearbox has a uh, little rubber plug which you just take out of the way. And if you see, here is actually a scale. 0, dash, 5, dash, 10. Okay, so that's 0 degrees, which is basically top dead center. 5 degrees before top dead center because the engine rotates towards us. There is a notch on the flower. As you can see that notch there. So that notch we will put opposite top dead center which is zero okay on the flower we put it opposite top dead center okay opposite the zero so that will give you top dead center okay and if you look at the piston itself you can see that the piston is pretty up you know which will make it to me is top dead center okay what I also um, always make sure of is that the dowels are in place okay so when we do take our um, when we do take our gasket that's our brand new gasket okay I normally look for the oil hole okay on the cylinder head, and I look for the for the oil jacket you know on the gasket which is normally has a little bit of a brass reinforcement around it as you can see as you can see there Okay, a little bit of brass reinforcement. So that will basically line up. So we have to turn it around and that will basically be the right way to put the gasket on. Okay, because any other way is, it will not fit. Because if we're going to turn it around that way, first of all, the dowel holes, okay, they big holes, all right? Uh, that has to go over the dowel. Okay, so that hole is too small to go over the dowel. So if you turn it around, so this gasket can really only go on one way, okay? So now we've got the gasket on and now we'll bring the cylinder along. So we'll take the cylinder and we just mount, mount the cylinder as best that we can. The important thing is to get the head to go into the dowels, which we have down there. Okay, 
And once the cylinder head is basically in, into the dowels, that is basically where you want it, okay, or how you want it. Um, in this case, I have bought new bolts, okay, I'm not using the old bolts. And uh, don't worry about that, because that we can push back to put, the, to put the manifold gasket on. So let's get the new bolts. So there, a brand new set of bolts, okay, 10 of them. And just take them, put them in, they actually do not take washes. I'm using a Torx, uh, a T55 Torx, okay, half inch drive. I'll just put it into my speed wrench, just to speed things up a little bit. So with the help of a pry bar, I'm just going to pry back the intake manifold, the exhaust manifold, like so. Okay, enough, so that I can take the gasket, put the gasket into place, and then just line up the manifold and get it all pushed back. Okay, easy. So we've got that all back. I can tie those bolts up, but more importantly, I want to torque the cylinder head first. Okay. So now we're getting down to why we've taken the front off. Can you see here now? You can access the intake manifold section of the cylinder head. With a radiator in place where my hand is, this whole thing was covered with a radiator. Okay. So I've already talked. 20 newton meters okay so now I have gotten my torque wrench set on 40 newton meters and um, the setting sequence is you first torque all 10 20 newton meters then you torque it 40 newton meters and then you'll torque it 90 degrees and another and then another second 90 degrees okay that's four stages and you know what we do when we talk um, degrees um, I normally mark with chalk so that I don't talk the same bulk twice. Okay, with the same amount of degrees. So, here we go. This is uh, 40 Newton meters. You can hear the torque wrench is uh, making a nice distinctive tick, click. Okay, so 40. And remember when you do torque down, don't jerk on the torque wrench. Have be, let it be a nice smooth movement. Okay, and stop when you hear the click because that's your tightening torque there okay nice smooth movement so we work from inside out to the outward okay now when you are talking newton meters you can double check okay when you talk degrees you cannot double check because chances of you snapping the bolts off is great As you know, this is brand new bolts that I've used here. So if we use the proper torque sequence, there is a minimal chance of the bolt breaking. Okay, so I've checked that twice. That's 40 Newton meters. Now we have to t tighten it its first um, 90 degrees. When I torque cylinder heads and it's like 90 degrees or 180 degrees, I normally don't use a gauge. Because you can just, you know, you can just judge. You start there and you end there. And that'll be 90 degrees. Okay, start there, end there. That's 90 degrees. It's quite simple. Um, but when you have these other funny degrees, 33 degrees or 40, 40 degrees or whatever, then it is best to use a gauge. But I'm just going to be using uh, that method, which I explained to you now. So I will turn it up straight, like that. And I will turn it until it... I have my 90 degrees and then what I do is I will mark that bolt because I have now tightened that bolt already I don't want to tighten it for a second time okay with the same degree or the same stage so here we go we start there and we end there okay so that's 90 degrees okay and we mark that one okay and we go on to the next one remember from inwards outwards okay so we got 90 degrees on that one and the opposite 90 degrees on that one so let's mark those two okay that's marked so when we get distracted we will not really forget that we haven't that we haven't so that we have talked that one already another 90 degrees here and listen guys i've been a mechanic for 30 years the 90 degrees doesn't have to be <laughs> uh, 
uh, um, you know, uh, the p very, very, very precise. It's a guide, it's a gauge. Okay. So, some, I'll get a lot of criticism from some people for that. But I'm a big boy, I can take that. So now we have talked all of them, all 10, okay, with our first 90 degrees. So we mark everything, all the ones that we have already talked. Okay, so we've talked all of them. So now for the second 90 degree, you can either, as you talk them, remove the marks, okay? Or remove all the marks now, and then as you talk them, mark them again. But I'll do the opposite. Um, okay, so 90 degrees again from the center. All right, let's go. It's gonna pull a bit tighter now. Okay, so that's 90 degrees. So I'll take that one off. We've done that one. It's 90 degrees, that one's done. Ninety degrees. Ninety degrees. Let's get that chalk out of it. So you see, if somebody distracts you now, then at least you know. Ah, I've still got chalk marks there and chalk marks there. So right, I've got to go to this is the next one. There's no chalk mark there, no chalk marks of that. that has been done already. Okay, very simple. So, 90 degrees. Ninety degrees. Take the chalk marks. Chalk away. Last four. Start here. It's one. Three. And the last one. Okay. So we have our cylinder torque down. Now I can go ahead, okay, and put on the cams. This is the critical part because we're going to start timing the motor now. Okay, so we know that we are on top of the center. We can double check that, you know, as we go along. And uh, now we need to bring the two cams. You see, you cannot put the cams on unless you've torqued down the cylinder head because these cams cover the cylinder head bolts. Okay. So this Fiat has hydraulic lifters. Okay. Um, I've just put them all in, as you can see. Okay. Uh, if I do turn the cam, you will see movement on the lifters as the cam lobes open and close the lifters. Now, I'm going to be putting these cam, uh, these cam boxes back, you know. Um, now, remember that we don't know, remember, we don't know which position, you know, that this cam is really in, unless we can turn it and we will get the back, we'll get the back ones to basically move to rock to go down and you'll know the front ones will come up but that's a guessing game so what we're going to do is I'm going to turn the engine uh, away from top dead center because I don't want the valves to touch the pistons okay so we're going to turn the cam, the crankshaft down okay so that the, all the pistons are basically in the center then we'll put the cam boxes on and then we put the locking plates in at the back which will basically set the cams on its proper settings and then we can turn the engine up to top dead center in so doing as we're turning the engine we can feel if there's any resistance okay and then once we've got the crank set at top dead center and all the and and, and the two cam lock uh, locking uh, tools on um, then we can uh, sort of uh, put the belt on and uh, get the belt uh, routed adjusted and fitted okay so I'm going to turn the crankshaft down first. 
So off comes the, the blanking plug for the exhaust um, cam. Okay, I'm going to be using the exhaust, as you can see, the exhaust blanking plug. Okay, I'll put it in there, and then of course we're going to be turning the cam so that it basically locks in. Okay, until you feel it, I can feel it locking in there, and when it's locked in, um, I'll tie it up with the three bolts and just we know that that cam is now lined up okay um, and we can put that cam box on and I will do the same with the inlet and once I've got that on um, you know I will put them on to the engine onto the cylinder head, and uh, continue with the timing procedure it does take new gaskets okay and uh, as you can see there's an odd hole there which will go into those two dowels okay and uh, knowing now that the gasket is on the right way around so here I have the exhaust cam box which I will put on just be careful that you have um, remember that you do have um, hydraulic lifters down there okay and as you can see this is not going flush okay because as we tighten down these cam boxes now they're going to be pushing the valves open and that is why I said to um, basically turn the top dead center down so that all four of the pistons are away from top dead center so that the valves will not touch the pistons okay so there is the sense in turning the engine down okay so we'll put those bolts in they also uh, Torx, Torx bolts um, I think the principle here would also be to basically um, you know uh, tighten it from the center outwards and uh, they are and the good thing is you keep this loose okay you you you, you get it to you, you get it to lock but you keep the nut loose so that that you have that little bit of play there for when you're putting the cam belt on I'll show you why later but just keep that loose okay so we've got this uh, tied down flush and we've got the cam tool in uh, and this is the exhaust side as you can see it's the exhaust manifold side okay so now we go and we put on the intake manifold side. So we have both cam boxes on. I haven't talked it yet. It's got to be talked 25 Newton meters. Okay. Uh, points to remember: always make sure that you have that shim gasket, okay, below the cam box, right? Um, and that your locking plates are in place before you start fitting the belt okay so we are about to start fitting the belt now and uh, you know I'll uh, show you how we do that all right so we have a new tensioner and I want to show you how to properly fit this tensioner as you know this uh, tensioner is spring loaded okay so with our final adjustment we have to get that pointer in that V okay but how to fit the tensioner there are two sections on the tensioner there is a slider okay and one that is uh, you know uh, a hole that looks oblong there all right so down on the on on the engine itself let me just take you down there and see if we can form it there's a pin okay you see there's a pin and then there is a little uh, a, a hollow there's a pin and a hollow there 
I hope you can see it. Okay, there's a pin and there's a hollow. Okay, so the pin comes on the slit. Okay, that indent that you see, that indent that you see there, that indent should be opposite that. Um, it should be opposite that that hollow there. Okay. So we'll take our tensioner and our uh, hold down nut. Okay, and we'll just fit the tensioner onto the stud and we make sure that the, sl that, uh, that the slit is over the pin okay in the pin because when we have that in the right position you will find I'll just tighten this nut by hand and you will find that you have that you have that sliding action of the pressure of the of the um, tensioner you'll have that sliding action of the tensioner so that we can adjust it okay so looking at the old tensioner okay you have that in that way and you have the you have the little the little slit inside there inside there okay and that you'll have over the indent in the uh, against the, 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 the engine block all right so once we have that fitted we now take um, you know, you noticed I have the backing plate off here, okay? Uh, we got to put on that backing plate before we put the gears on. But I left it off so that I can show you how this uh, tool gets mounted. So, this tool mounts basically like that, okay? It goes into that slot and uh, this uh, thread gets uh, uh, bolted into that thread in the cylinder there. Okay, so let's just put it on so that you can see how it looks so we'll turn that bolt in as you turn that bolt in you will find that um, you know the whole unit will just go towards the, 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 the little uh, uh, oblong uh, cut out on the tensioner and once that is in there okay you just tighten that by hand now when you operate when you move the when you move the, the tool okay you can see that you can actually now adjust the tension on the belt. Okay, so that's basically how you put the the new tensioner in place. I've also put a new guide pulley in. Okay, so now I am going to put on the backing plate. I'm going to put on the gears loosely, and then we're going to uh, um, turn the crankshaft up to top dead center, um, and then we're going to put the belt on and uh, get it properly adjusted. So you can see the notch in the ca ca in the in the, cra in the flywheel. Okay, the notch is opposite zero, so that would put our piston number one at top dead center. Okay, and then we have our uh, tools in place to lock the two cams. Okay, the intake and the exhaust cams. Um, those tools are in place. So now we'll go to the front, and feed the feed the belt in, and then adjust the tension on the on the belt. On the crankshaft side. Um, I found a notch in the, you know, against the engine here. There's a little notch, a little uh, um, notch there. I've made a mark opposite, and here is a marking on the gear as well. Okay, it's a, like a little round stamped circle on it. I've just highlighted it with some Tipex. And then at the bottom, you know, right opposite, you have a also like a, a cliff that's indented in this pulley, okay, in the gear. And I've just made my own mark there just to line them up so that when I do have the belt on, you know, um, I can check, just do a quick check to see if everything is in order. So, let's go and put this belt on and get it tensioned. With uh, the crank, okay, just get the belt on the crank. What I normally do when I fit these belts, I normally have the wording facing me, you know, um, I read it, uh, reading, uh, reading the right way around. It's also got a uh, run, basically this belt runs the, the oil pump, which is down at the bottom, it's also a, a toothed uh, gear. Okay, the, 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 the cam gears I basically leave loose, okay. I've got the bolts in, turned up against, but I keep them loose for ease of fitting the, 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 the belt. Okay, because you know you normally that half a tooth out and you can never get the thing to, you know, to line up properly and all that kind of thing. So what we do is we pull up the play completely on the 
you know, we, we, we don't want any play. Um, first of all, we don't want any play between the gears and we don't want any play on this side because that's not the adjusting side. Okay, the adjusting side is actually where the tensioner is and that's basically where you want your, uh, your, your, your slack to be. So just to show you, I've got the belt threaded. So there's my notch in the flower and there's the zero top dead center. Okay, that's still in place. So you can see I've got the belt threaded now and the crank uh, markings are in place. Okay, and uh, the slack is on the tensioner side. So I'm going to go ahead and tension the belt now with a special tool. Okay, watch the belt. You'll see the tension on the belt as I'm pushing my hand, my finger on the belt. Okay, and then as I sort of adjust the tensioner, you will see the tension goes away, goes off the belt. So while um, you see you basically using a size 17 spanner up against your tool, okay, the, 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 the tensioning tool. So you pull it, take all the tension up, you make that belt pretty tight. Okay. Pull the tension up and then while the tension's up, lock the, lock the tensioner, okay, take, the, take your spanner off your tool. And uh, now the tensioner is basically locked up. It's very tight now, okay? The setting is not right yet, okay? We just have to um, check everything and make sure that uh, our timing marks are still lined up. Once again, you can see that our timing marks is definitely lined up still on the, on the back side of the engine. Now this is the... So I've talked them both up to 120 Newton meters, okay? They both talked tight. So now we can take our cam locks out of the way. So we'll take the cam locks out of the way. Okay, served as well. I have marked mine, uh, as you can see, EXH, that's the exhaust, that's the intake. We turn them around and we just give them, I've got new seals on, but we'll just give them a little bit of help. I normally do that, I don't take chances because once this is in, it's difficult to get to, so we don't want to uh, have to strip down off our job because, you know, we didn't take precautionary measures with sealing. I use Victor Ryan's sealer. It's more of a gasket maker than a sealer, I always say. So we'll put that in, that one in like that. Not protrusion there. Okay. It just goes in like that, and uh, we tighten them up with the appropriate nuts. I'll get back to you when I've got that all done. So just make sure your blanking plugs are flush, okay, and that they are nice and tight, okay. So they're all nice and tight, and you can see how the sealer actually oozes out, you know, which basically gives you that um, assurance that it is sealing off nicely. Another thing that we need to do is, don't forget, you know, to torque down your uh, cam boxes, okay. Uh, the bolts here, they're 25 mm, uh, the tension on them is 25 mm. Um, sorry, it's 25 Newton meters, okay, that's the torque pressure. Um, and also just do it from, you know, the center outwards, okay. As I say, just torque down your cam boxes. 25 Newton meters so you know if you uh, sort of lose track about which one you've talked last doesn't really matter because remember that these are not stretch bolts you can talk them a gazillion times if you need to okay and then just go from the center as I said you know work your way out like you do with the cylinder head okay just make sure and when you pull on your torque wrench, don't snap it, sort of pull gently until it clicks. You know, don't jerk it in other words, because when you're jerking it, then you're basically going, you're basically going to go over your, your torque, okay? So let's do this one. And let's see this one, I haven't talked yet. Okay, from the center outwards. Pretty simple, gentle, smooth, no jerking. Yep, 
you know, sometimes it's just a matter of the right amount of pressure, you know, and technique. It's not just all about rough stuff. Right, so that's how you talk your cam boxes. Go from the middle again. I normally double and triple check just to make 100% sure that I've done all of them. You know, once you start getting uh, into procedure, you know, you tend to sort of remember how things need to be done. Uh, it becomes uh, muscle memory or second nature. Okay, so now. So far, we've tensioned up the, the belt. Okay, it's pretty tight. Okay, we didn't set the tensioner yet. We're gonna set it on its mark. But we've taken out the blanking plug, so that means that we can now turn the motor. Make sure that uh, any devices that you've put into the bottom end of the engine to hold the crank in position, make sure that all those things are uh, taken out of the way. Okay, also ensure that your marks before you start turning the motor that your marks are lining up that we did check already okay the top dead centers and all that kind of thing that's all uh, sort of in place so now what we're going to do is we're going to turn this engine 360 degrees once and another 360 degrees and then we're going to bring the top dead center mark back to where it was and then we will check uh, you know then we'll there, there, there then we'll have to check and make sure that all our marks are lining up again okay so without further ado let's go ahead and do that just a tip, okay, before you do that, uh, just make sure that you've taken all the spark plugs out because then the engine will just turn that much easier. Because remember now that the engine's going to be making compression while you're turning it, okay, and if you have your spark plugs out, it's just gonna make the engine, turning the engine um, that much easier. All right. So what I've also done is put mocks, you know, just on the gears so that we can do a quick reference and make sure that the gears are lining up like it should after we've turned it. What I've done is on the on the crankshaft sensor, I've made a mark and I've made a mark on the front pulley. So now I'm going to turn it 360 degrees twice. Okay, so we're coming up to the second 360 degree. So I've put that right opposite the white marks over there, which I made. So those cam gears are lined up as well. Okay, you can see the marks are lined up nicely there. Alright, so I think that that is in order. So now we just have to make the proper adjustment on the tensioner. Okay, that'll be the proper tension. Okay, now. So firstly, we loosen up the tensioner to make sure that uh, we can adjust it. We've got the tensioner locked. So there, it's unlocked now. Okay, and then. We take the 17 spanner on the special tool, okay, and now we have to take that tensioner up. So I'm going to turn the engine to 360 degree turns, and we'll see what happens. Okay, come back, and you can see I'm coming back to my mark. Okay, we come back to the to the tensioner and the tensioner is still okay the arrow in the V. Let's do it again. Okay, on the mark and in the V and that's what we need. Okay, proper tension on the belt. Belt mustn't be too tight, it mustn't be too loose either. See the mark is in line. Okay, and that's the proper tension on that uh, on the belt. So let's tighten the tension up and we can take our tool out of the way now. Now all we need to do is we need to torque this to 190 degrees. So we need to find a way to, to hold the engine so that uh, you know it doesn't move when we are tight talking, tightening down that center nut. So I've torqued down the pulley to 190 uh, newton meters. So yeah, the jobs, uh, basically the engine is timed now. So now all that I have to do is I have to put on all the peripherals like the intake manifold, you know, the, the airflow meter, uh, connect all the hoses, get the radiator back in, put the front uh, bumper and mud guard and uh, wheel arches on, okay? I'll go ahead and I'll do that. Uh, that's not what this video is all about. The video was all about how to time 
this twin cam um, uh, Fiat Strada engine. Okay, so I'll get back to you, you know, once I'm all done and she's running and you know, you can see that the timing uh, was all right and that the engine will be running pretty well. Okay, job all done. I've got all the little bits and pieces on. Okay, I've done an oil change and put a new filter in and uh, she starts pretty well. It starts pretty easy. I'm going to take it for a drive now and see how she goes. But other than that, that's a Fiat Strada, a half-ton bucket.